You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. E100, Week 10 Prophets Three Principles to Unlock the Code Prophets and prophecy are probably the most misunderstood part of the Old Testament. There's a book about the prophets that calls them mysterious messengers. And certainly if you grab a chunk from a prophetic book at random, it won't be a nice neat foretelling of Jesus like Isaiah 53 or a story like Jeremiah 1 but rather a confusing seemingly muddled confusion of vivid picture language yet three simple principles can usually unlock the mystery and allow the prophet to speak to me and to you prophets are about conversion not prediction they come to us from a context they're not timeless and they're a conversation, not a monologue. Let's take them one at a time. Conversion, not prediction. Isaiah 53 speaks so clearly about Jesus that it's hard, if that's all you read of the prophets, or almost all, not to think that prophecy equals prediction. And English dictionaries are no help. But Isaiah chapter 51 gives us clues that the prophets are more often concerned to change their listeners' behavior than to predict their futures. All through the prophetic books we find appeals to change. The prophets preached for conversion rather than informing about the future. They called God's people back to God. They reminded the covenant people of the expectations that that covenant laid on them. One scholar calls them God's covenant enforcers. They speak to us from a context they're not timeless. People say that biblical narrative in general is fraught with background, by which they mean that it doesn't give us the background very much, not like modern stories. But for the prophetic books, we get even less background. We're told very little about the who, what, when, where, how, why questions. So we need help. Stop. You've no idea what I mean, because you've no context for the sentence. To get some context for a reading from one of the prophets, there are a number of sources that can help. The simplest is just the introduction to the book if your Bible has one. Or you can look up the book or some of the words in the reading in a Bible dictionary. And of course commentaries can be a great help. If the prophets are covenant enforcers, not fortune tellers, context helps to make them clearer to us today. We can see and understand the prophet's concern for their here and now. And we can notice that even when they do talk about the future, it's usually either as a consequence of what's wrong now, or to remind their hearers of the great God of the covenant, who will and can restore and renew even what now seems fatally broken. Prophecy is a conversation, not a monologue. The prophets use different voices. For a start, there's the prophet and God, because the prophets often speak in God's name. And then there's often, sometimes, the imagined response of the audience, or quotes from the prophet's target. Sometimes the prophetic book signals that to us, like Malachi does, when it's repeating or imagining the audience or the target's words. But more often, we have to work that out and we nearly always have to work out when it's God's voice and when it's God's messenger's voice and sometimes we can't because they're so close to each other that they meld together so when reading the prophets we need to hear the voices here it can help if you try reading the reading aloud because then often you have to imagine the voice in order to read the passage so three principles Prophets are about conversion, not prediction. They're situated in a context and not timeless. Prophetic speech is a conversation, not a monologue. With those three principles, the fortune tellers become evangelists, and the mysterious messages become calls to us to convert, to change our behavior, or to redeem our world.